Section one of Robert Graves. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Robert Graves, a collection of poems written by Robert Graves. Section one. In the wilderness. Christ of his gentleness, thirsting and hungering walked in the wilderness soft words of grace he spoke he spoke unto lost desert folk that listened wondering he heard the bitterns call from ruined palace wall answered them brotherly he held communion with the she pelican of lonely piety basilisk cockatrice flocked to his homilies with mail of dread device with monstrous barbed stings with eager dragon eyes great bats on leathern wings and poor blind broken things foul in their miseries and ever with him went of all his wanderings comrade with ragged coat gaunt ribs poor innocent bleeding foot burning throat the guileless old scapegoat for forty nights and days followed in jesus's ways sure guard behind him kept tears like a lover wept A boy in church gabble gabble brethren gabble gabble my window frames forest and heather i hardly hear the tuneful babble not knowing nor much caring whether the text is praise or exhortation prayer or thanksgiving or damnation outside it blows wetter and wetter the tossing trees never stay still i shift my elbows to catch better the full round sweep of heathered hill the tortured copse bends to and fro in silence like a shadow show the parson's voice runs like a river over smooth rocks i like this church the pews are staid they never shiver they never bend or sway or lurch prayer says the kind voice is a chain that draws down grace from heaven again i add the hems up over and over until there's not the least mistake seven seventy one look there's a plover it's gone who's that saint by the lake the red light from his mantle passes across the broad memorial brasses it's pleasant here for dreams and thinking lolling and letting reason nod with ugly serious people linking sad prayers to a forgiving god but a dumb blast sets the trees swaying with furious zeal like madmen praying escape August 6, 1916. Officer previously reported died of wounds, now reported wounded. Graves, Captain, R. Royal Welsh Fusiliers. But I was dead, an hour or more. I woke when I'd already passed the door that Serapis guards, and halfway down the road to Leith, as an old Greek signpost showed, above me on my stretcher swinging by, I saw new stars in the subterranean sky. A cross, a rose in bloom, a cage with bars, and a barbed arrow feathered in fine stars. I felt the vapors of forgetfulness float in my nostrils. Oh, may heaven bless dear Lady Persepine, who saw me wake, and stooping over me, for Enna's sake, cleared my poor buzzing head and sent me back, breathless, with leaping heart along the track. After me roared and clattered angry hosts of demons heroes and policemen ghosts life life i can't be dead i won't be dead damned if i'll die for anyone i said cerebus stands and grins above me now wearing three heads lion and lynx and sow quick revolver but my webley's gone stolen no bombs no knife the crowd swarms on bellows hurls stones not even a honeyed sop nothing good cerebus good dog but stop stay a great luminous thought i do believe there's still some morphia that i brought on leave then swiftly cerebus's wide mouths i cram with army biscuits smeared with ration jam and sleep lurks in the luscious plum and apple he crunches swallows stiffens seems to grapple with the all-powerful poppy then a snore a crash the beast blocks up the corridor with monstrous hairy carcass 
read and done too late for i've sped through o life o sun vain and careless lady lovely lady careless and gay once when a beggar called she gave her child away the beggar took the baby wrapped it in a shawl bring her back the lady said next time you call hard by lived a vain man so vain and so proud he walked on stilts to be seen by the crowd up above the chimney pots tall as a mast and all the people ran about shouting till he passed a splendid match surely neighbors saw it plain although she is so careless although he is so vain but the lady played bob cherry did not see or care as the vain man went by her aloft in the air this gentle-born couple lived and died apart water will not mix with oil nor vain with careless heart pot and kettle come close to me dear annie while i bind a lover's knot a tale of burning love between a kettle and a pot the pot was stalwart iron and the kettle trusty tin and though their sides were black with smoke they bubbled love within forget that kettle jamie and that pot of boiling broth i know a dismal story of a candle and a moth for while your pot is boiling and while your kettle sings my moth makes love to candle flame and burns away his wings your moth i envy annie that died by candle flame but here are two more lovers unto no damage came there was a cuckoo loved a clock and found her always true for every hour they told their hearts ring ting cuckoo cuckoo as the pot boiled for the kettle as the kettle for the pot so boils my love within me till my breast is glowing hot as the moth died for the candle so could i die for you and my fond heart beats time with yours and cries cuckoo cuckoo song one hard look small gnats that fly in hot july and lodge in sleeping ears can rouse therein a trumpet's din with day of judgment fears small mice at night can wake more fright than lions at midday a straw will crack the camel's back there is no easier way one smile relieves a heart that grieves though deadly sad it be and one hard look can close the book that lovers love to see. Dicky, Mother, oh, what a heavy sigh! Dicky, are you ailing? Dicky, even by this fireside, Mother, my heart is failing. Tonight across the down, whistling and jolly, I sauntered out from town with my stick of holly. Bounteous and cool from sea, the wind was blowing, cloud shadows under the moon coming and going. I sang old roaring songs, ran and leaped quick, and turned home by St. Swithin's, twirling my stick. And there I was passing the churchyard gate. An old man stopped me. Dicky, you're walking late. I did not know the man. I grew afeard at his lean lolling jaw, his spreading beard, his garments old and musty of antique cut, his body very lean and bony, his eyes tight shut, oh even to tell it now my courage ebbs his face was clay mother his beard cobwebs in that horrid pause good night he said entered and clicked the gate each to his bed mother do not sigh or fear dicky how is it right to grudge the dead their ghostly dark and wan moonlight we have the glorious sun lamp and fireside Grudge not the dead their moonbeams when abroad they ride. Ghost rattled. Come, surly fellow, come, a song. What, madman, sing to you? Choose from the clouded tales of wrong and terror I bring to you, of a night so torn with cries, honest men sleeping, start awake with glaring eyes, bone chilled, flesh creeping of spirits in the web-hung room up above the stable groans knockings in the gloom the dancing table of demons in the dry well that cheep and mutter clanging of an unseen bell blood choking the gutter of lust frightful past belief lurking unforgotten 
unrestrainable endless grief from breasts long rotten a song what laughter or what song can this house remember do flowers and butterflies belong to a blind december alley alley call the birds in the birds from the sky alley calls alley sings down they all fly first there came two white doves then a sparrow from his nest then a clucking bantam hen then a robin redbreast alley calls the beasts in the beasts every one alley calls alley sings in they all run first there came two black lambs then a grunting berkshire sow then a dog without a tail then a red and white cow alley call the fish up the fish from the stream alley calls alley sings up they all swim first there came two goldfish a minnow and a miller's thumb then a pair of spotted trout then the twisting eels come alley call the children children from the green alley calls alley sings soon they run in first there came tom and madge kate and i will never forget how we played by the water's edge till the april sun set a frosty night mother alice dear what ails you dazed and white and shaken has the chill night numbed you is it fright you have taken alice mother i am very well i felt never better mother do not hold me so let me write my letter mother sweet my dear what ails you alice no but i am well the night was cold and frosty there's no more to tell mother ay the night was frosty coldly gaped the moon yet the bird seemed twittering through green boughs of june soft and thick the snow lay stars danced in the sky not all the lambs of may-day skipped so bold and high your feet were dancing alice seemed to dance on air you looked a ghost or angel in the starlight there your eyes were frosted starlight your heart fire and snow who was it said i love you alice mother let me go rocky acres this is a wild land country of my choice with harsh craggy mountain more ample and bare seldom in these acres is heard any voice but voice of cold water that runs here and there through rocks and lank heather growing without care no mice in the heath run nor no birds cry for fear of the dark speck that floats in the sky he soars and he hovers rocky on his wings he scans his wide parish with a sharp eye he catches the trembling of small hidden things he tears them in pieces dropping from the sky tenderness and pity the land will deny where life is but nourished from water and rock a hearty adventure full of fear and shock time has never journeyed to this lost land crakeberries and heather bloom out of date the rocks jut the streams flow singing on either hand careless if the season be early or late the skies wander overhead now blue now slate winter would be known by his cold cutting snow if june did not borrow his armor also yet this is my country beloved by me best the first land that rose from chaos and the flood nursing no fat valleys for comfort and rest trampled by no hard hooves stained with no blood bold and mortal country whose hilltops have stood strongholds for the proud gods when on earth they go terror for fat burghers and far plains below a lover since childhood tangled in thought am i stumble in speech do i do i blunder and blush for the reason why wander aloof do i lean over gates and sigh making friends with the bee and the butterfly if thus and thus i do dazed by the thought of you walking my sorrowful way in the early dew my heart cut through and through in this despair for you star for a word or a look will my hope renew give then a thought for me walking so miserably wanting relief in the friendship of flower or tree do but remember we once in love could agree swallow your pride 
let us be as we used to be. A Crusader Death, eager always to pretend himself my servant in the land of spears, humble allegiance at the end, broke where the homeward track your castle nears, let his white steed before my red steed press, and wrapped you from me into quietness. THE RIDGE TOP Below the ridge a raven flew, and we heard the lost curlew, morning out of sight below, mountain tops were touched with snow, even the long dividing plain showed no wealth of sheep or grain, but fields of boulders lay like corn, and raven's croak was shepherd's horn, to slow cloud shadow straight across the pasture of thin heath and moss. The north wind rose, I saw him press with lusty force against your dress, molding your body's inward grace and streaming off from your set face. So now no longer flesh and blood, but poised in marble thought you stood. O wingless victory, love to men, who could withstand your triumph then? Song of Contrariety Far away is close at hand, close joined is far away. Love might come at your command, yet will not stay. At summons of your dream, despair, she could not disobey, but slid close down beside you there, and complacent lay. Yet now her flesh and blood consent, in waking hours of day, joy and passion both are spent, fading, clean away. Is the presence of empty air, is the spectre clay, that love lent substance by despair, wanes and leaves you lonely there, on the bridal day? End of section one. Section two of Robert Graves, a collection of poems written by Robert Graves. The Sleepervox recording is in the public domain. Section two. A forced music. Of love he sang, full hearted one. But when the song was done, the king demanded more. Ay, and commanded more. The boy found nothing for encore, words, melodies, none. Ashamed, the song's glad rise and plaintive fall had so charmed king and queen and all. He sang the same verse once again, but urging less love's pain with altered time and key, he showed variety, seemed to refresh the harmony of his only strain, so still the glad rise and the plaintive fall could charm the king, the queen, and all. He of his song then, wearying, ceased, but was not yet released. The queen's request was more, and her behest was more. He played of random notes some score, and found his rhymes at least, then suddenly let his twangling harp down fall, and fled in tears from king and queen, and all. I am the star of morning. I am the star of morning, poised between the dead night and the coming of the sun, yet neither relic of the dark nor pointing the angry day to come. My virtue is my own, a mild light, an enduring peace, and the remembering ancient tribes of birds sing blithest at my showing. Only man sleeps on and stirs rebellious in his sleep. Lucifer, Lucifer am I, millstone crushed, between conflicting powers of doubleness. By envious night, lost in her myriad more counterfeit glints, in daytime quite overwhelmed by tyrant blazing of the warrior sun. Yet some, my prophets who at midnight hold me, fixedly framed in their observant glass, by daylight also, sinking well shafts deep for water and for coolness of pure thought, gaze up and far above them see me shining, me, single-natured, without gender, one, the only spark of Godhead unresolved. THE NORTH WINDOW When the chapel is lit and sonorous with plowman's praise, when matron and child crouch low to the Lord of days, when the windows are shields of grayness all about, for the glowing lamps within and the storm without, on this eve of all souls, suicides too have souls, 
the damned to the northward rise from their tablets and scrolls with infants unbaptized that lie without ease with women betrayed their mothers who murdered these they make them a furious chapel of wind and gloom with southward one stained window the hour of doom lit up by the lamp of the righteous beaming through with the scene reversed and the legend backwards too displaying in scarlet and gold the creator who damns who has thrust on his left the bleating sheep and the lambs who has fixed on his right the goats and kids accursed with omega alpha restoring the last as first then the psalms of god that issue hence or thence ring blasphemy each to the other's omnipotence the rainbow and the skeptic degrees of god of one prime cause predestinate for men whose only knowledge of such laws is change and change again made free or fated what care i in truth's grand overthrow since knowledge is but folly spy it is not sane to know for fate a word of trivial sense and freedom is knocked blind if there is nowhere permanence if god can change his mind disconsolate and strange enough he walked the forest side the sun blazed out the shower drew off the rainbow straddled wide it stained with red the chalky road it leapt from sea to hill a second arch more faintly showed a third arch faintlier still the black blaspheming furious mood passed from him gradually wry-mouthed in cynic pause he stood and smiled the golden key the elf key at the rainbow's rise watch it and walk with care it vanishes beneath your eyes it passes on elsewhere so laws like rainbows move and mock so wisdom never brings the airy treasure to unlock the essential heart of things a spirit of air in answer spoke with strange and solemn sense music and light about him broke in seven-toned effulence man man accept this new decree of beauty as you go observe the march of what must be the bend of each new bow then since laws move in rainbow light let faith be therefore strong that change can never prove you right nor either prove you wrong shall time the present judge time past once blotted from its view each key must vary from the last because each lock springs new knowledge of changing lock and key so much the finite is let the bow beckon follow me whose hopes are certainties yet beyond all this rest content in dumbness to revere infinite god without event causeless not there not here neither eternal nor time bound not certain nor in change uncancelled by the cosmic ground nor crushed within its range diplomatic relations king george still powder grimed from dettingen called in thick tones my lord fetch ink and pen i'll write a threatening note in my own hand this chinese potentate must understand that britons have a quenchless fame to brag no insult shall defy our glorious flag two bristol ships at hankow fetching tea boarded and robbed at wharfside as they lay of a costly cargo ah sir let me boast my fleet stands ready to bombard your coast if meek apologies be not forthcoming my fusiliers must through peking go drumming or shall eat dust do you hear you knavish fellow or we shall tan your hide a deeper yellow ten ships shall yearly visit your chief ports with mirrors beads and clothing of all sorts carried decorum to your savage parts with civilization learning and the arts but if so much as a rattle's robbed or broke your chinese territory flies up in smoke you then beware signed georgius rex so so our foreign minister sends this take it go the foreign minister reading the piece through swore by his wig why this would never do our sovereign trips on all the finer points of english speech confuses blurs disjoints to send this note is blood it were 
most unwise suppose it intercepted by french spies langues du roy i hear their mocking tone dunce cap instead of crown dunce stool for throne why even in china men would laugh to read this halting odd misspelt improbable screed but stay our sovereign would surely please translating him his note into chinese li chang will do it then there be no call to pawn our honour with the original li chung the bondsman tea man with meek eyes perform the service showing no surprise though inwardly enraged and jealous for the sacred majesty of his emperor how faithful his translation who can say george signed it merrily and it reached cathay the emperor from his summer terraces claps hands for ink and sable paint brushes and writes with care a special declaration to the loyal governor of the british nation commiserating with that luckless one by seas exiled from his imperial son on such outcast and pariah-like condition we note the abject tone of your petition and sorry excuses for your impotence is thus soliciting our magnificence then though we cannot in the atlas hit on a chinese province or sub-province britain we graciously will none the less allow ten yearly junks to harbour at hankow with skins blubber oil and such like pelting stuff indeed five junk loads would be quite enough formal permission signed your god so so our foreign minister sends this take it go the foreign minister reading the piece through swore by his pigtail this will never do our emperor neglects the niceties indeed the major rules of court chinese our iron-helmed manchu god in battle shock or warrior council sits as firm as rock but as for drafting edict note or letter my six-year-old could do as well i better can i permit my sovereign's reputation to sink even in a heathen's estimation i'll tactfully propose it more correct to send this note in british dialect ned gunn the boxing teacher at nanking will soon translate the odd fantastic thing ned gunn a stolid sailor with bold eyes perform the service showing no surprise though loyal to the death he felt his gorge mount at this insult to victorious george his english version which he owned was free the emperor signed frowned sent it over sea george read the note puffed out his cheeks began he takes his medicine like a sensible man apologizes humbly swears to behave with fawning loyalty of dog or slave sadly admits his color far from white and trusts this missive is not impolite longs for our british cargoes rich and strange has only trash to offer in exchange may your red white and blue still rule the main and countless dettingens be fought again god save the king kow tow success to barter george swore we must reward him with the garter alice when that prime heroine of our nation alice climbing courageously in through the palace of looking-glass found it inhabited by chess-poured personages white and red involved in never-ending tournament she being of true philosophic bent had long foreshadowed something of this kind asking herself suppose i stood behind and viewed the fireplace of their drawing-room from hearth-rug level why must i assume that what i see now must needs correspond with what i saw then in the rooms beyond why should they pair with our rooms she was right an earlier einstein whom the laws of light and euclid's begged the question fallacies could not convince a mastermind was alice's moreover uncontent with what she had done alice decided to enlarge her fun setting herself with proper british phlegm in simple faith and simple stratagem to learn the rules and moves and perfect them so prosperously there she settled down that six moves only and she'd won her crown a triumph surely but her greater feat was rounding these adventures off complete accepting them when safe returned again it's queer but true not merely in the main 
true but as true as anything you'd swear to not worse or better than the life we are heir to the waking life which but i cannot say why we worship as the sole reality for alice though a child could understand that neither did this chance discovered land make know-how or contrary wise the clean dull round of mid-victorian routine nor did victoria's golden rule extend beyond the glass it came to the dead end where formal logic also comes thereafter begins that lubberland of dream and laughter the red and white flower spangled hedge the grass where apuleius pastured his gold ass where young gargantua made full holiday but further from our heroine not to stray let us observe with what uncommon sense through a secure and easy reference between red queen and kitten could be found she made no false assumption on that ground a trap in which the scientist would fall that queens and kittens are identical the presence why say death for death's neither harsh nor kind other pleasures or pains could hold the mind if she were dead for dead is gone indeed lost beyond recovery and need discarded ended brought it underground of whom no personal feature could be found to stand out from the soft blur evenly spread on memory if she were truly dead but living still barred from accustomed use of body and dress and motion in abuse of loving kindness for our anguish too denies we love her as we swear we do she fills the house and garden terribly with her bewilderment accusingly enforcing her too sharp identity till every stone and flower bottle and book cries out her name pierces us with her look you are deaf hear me you are blind see me how deaf or blind when horror unrelieved maddens the mind with those same pangs that lately choked her breath and changed her substance but have brought no death from our ghostly enemy the fire was already white ash when the lamp went out and the clock at that signal stopped the man in the chair held his breath as if death were about the moon shone bright as a lily on his books outspread he could read in that lily's light when you have endured your fill kill the book read the print being small for his eyes to ease their strain a hasty candle he lit keeping the page with his thumb come those words again but the book he held in his hand and the page he held spelt prayers for the sick and needy by god they are wanted here with fear his heart swelled i know of an attic ghost of a cellar ghost and one that stalks in the meadows but here's the spirit i dread he said the most who without voice or body distresses me much twists the ill to holy holy to ill confuses me out of reach of speech or touch who works by moon or by noon threatening my life i am sick and needy indeed he went then filled with despairs upstairs to his wife he told her those things adding this morning alone writing i felt for a matchbox it rose up into my hand understand on its own in the garden yesterday as i walked by the beds with the tail of my eye i caught death within twelve hours written in flowers heads she answered him simple advice but new he thought and true husband of this be sure that whom you fear the most this ghost fears you speak to the ghost and tell him whoever you be ghost my anguish equals yours let our cruelties therefore end your friend let me be he spoke and the ghost who knew not how he plagued the man ceased and the lamp was lit again and the dumb clock ticked again and the reign of peace began end of section two end of robert graves a collection of poetry written by robert graves